This video demonstrates two different strategies for managing an intraoperative decimate attachment during pressurized viscocanaloplasty. In this first example, the helon trapped at the interface will be pulled out with IA. A paracentesis was made pointing at the nasal angle, and the AC was filled with lidocaine followed by myostat followed by helon 5. After the head was turned, a grease hopper blade was used to make a small otomy in the nasal TM, and the eye track advance catheter was docked into place and the actuator was slid forward to push the illuminated microcatheter forward into Schlems. The blinking red light can be seen as the catheter is advanced, and blanching can be seen as the red blood cells are pushed further downstream. The assistant clicks the visco injector 10 clicks per quadrant, and unfortunately, a decimate attachment is noted here superiorly. This was unusual because the AC was well pressurized and the catheter was moving forward continuously while the visco injector was being clicked. Despite this, the catheter is still advanced forward, keeping an eye on the red blinking light. After 10 clock hours, an obstruction is reached and the catheter cannot be pushed forward any further. So the entire handpiece and catheter are pulled straight out of the para, which accomplishes a 270 degree goniotomy in this case. There's helon trapped in the area of the decimate attachment, so a venting stab is made to help it escape. Bimanual IA was used to remove the helon 5 and pull out the helon that was trapped at the interface. This bimanual IA handpiece is a relatively smaller gauge and was not as effective at removing helon 5, so a large main wound was made so that coaxial IA could be used to further remove helon 5. The IA tip was swept back and forth under the area of the decimate attachment to make sure that all the helon at the interface could be pulled out. Decimates appear to be back in place, and in order to help it stick, an air bubble was injected into the AC with the intention to leave it for five minutes. Despite hydrating all the wounds, the air kept escaping out of the large 2.4 millimeter main wound, so we refilled the chamber with helon, sutured the wounds, then rinsed the helon out of the AC again, and re-injected a large air bubble, which we left for five minutes. After five minutes, the air bubble was made smaller so the patient would not go into pupillary block, but a small bubble was purposely left in the eye since the area of the detachment was superior, so the superior bubble may help press the decimate back into place with the patient sitting upright. In the second example, the helon trapped at the interface will be pushed out with helon 5. After the head was turned, a grease hopper blade was used to make a small otomy in the nasal TM, and the eye track advance catheter was docked into place, and the actuator was slid forward to push the illuminated microcatheter forward into Schlems. The blinking red light can be seen as the catheter is advanced, and blanching can be seen as the red blood cells are pushed further downstream. After nine clock hours, an obstruction is reached and the catheter cannot be advanced any farther forward. After trying to click the visco injector a few times, the catheter still cannot be advanced, so it is retracted back into the injector and the injector is removed from the eye. I switched places with my trainee and gave it a try myself, and this time the catheter went 360 degrees around Schlems. Since a pressurized viscocanaloplasty had already been performed for the first 270 degrees, no additional viscoelastic was injected as the catheter came around the second time, but in order to perform the canaloplasty for those final three clock hours, the catheter was retracted, visco was injected, and the catheter was pushed forward again. Using a technique described by Arsham Shabani, the injector was pivoted forward by about 90 degrees to get better purchase of the catheter in the canal before the handpiece and catheter are pulled out of the para to perform as large of a goniotomy as possible without having to retrieve the tip. Unfortunately, at this point, a decimate attachment was noted infratemporally, so several stab incisions were made into the area of the decimate attachment to help the helon vent out. Since helon 5 is heavier than helon, the AC was hyperfilled with helon 5 to help push out the helon that was trapped at the interface and flatten out the decimate attachment. After much deliberation, we decided to proceed with the FACO, and the main wound was made in the area of the decimate attachment, which had now been reattached. After an uneventful FACO, an air bubble was injected into the AC and left in place for five minutes. After five minutes, the air bubble was made smaller so the patient would not go into pupillary block on the night of surgery. In summary, if you encounter an intraoperative decimate attachment, remember to make full thickness venting stabs through the cornea at the area of the decimate attachment so the helon at the interface can be evacuated. All viscoelastic at the interface must be pushed or pulled out before an air bubble can be injected into the AC to help the decimate stick back into place. Helon 5 is heavier than helon, and helon is heavier than air, so any helon that's trapped at the interface cannot be pushed out with just air. Helon can be pushed out of the interface with helon 5 or pulled out of the interface with IA. After the helon at the interface has been evacuated and the AC is filled with BSS, an air bubble can be placed and should be left in place for five minutes on the table. The air bubble should be made smaller before leaving the OR to avoid pupillary block overnight. An inferior PI would be needed if the intention is to leave a large air bubble in place. Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope these tips will make you feel more confident in handling the rare, but still possible, intraoperative complication of decimate attachment during viscocanaloplasty. Please email me if you have any questions and check out my YouTube channel for more surgical videos.